Uh, I, I'm here by default. Uh, the Manhattan Institute was looking for a critic of the program, and for some reason, uh, no one wanted to enter the lion's den. Um, so my old friend Howard Husak called me and, and asked me if I'd play. And I said, you know, if you're counting on me to hold down the left wing, you're in a lot of trouble. Um, uh, George Kelly and I have been associated for a long time. I state my conflict of interest. I've done a little, little subcontract tracking with him. Um, and it's, it's always a great pleasure to be in the same room as uh, Jim Wilson, uh, from whom I've learned so much. Uh, but I am here as, the, as a designated critic, so, so let, me, let me get started. Um, I was grateful to Jim for, as usual, stating rather bluntly the central social factor, which is that bums are a pain in the ass. Um, there's a lot of euphemism that gets used, um, and I noticed uh, Heather McDonald gave, gave us the usual line about, well, it's not the people, it's the behavior. Oh, come on. Um, people who are drug addicted, mentally ill, jobless, and live on the street are not fun to have around. Europeans are sensible about this. They send them out to the suburbs where you don't hear about them until there's a riot. Um, Americans are stupid about it. We keep them in the inner cities, uh, which are expensive places to have them. Um, and as Jim also pointed out, concentration of bad behavior is a bad thing. Uh, better to disperse it. Um, well, that all seems right. Um, the central social process at work here, it seems to me, is one that's not as well as understood as it ought to be, but that if anybody ever bothers to publish with food for sales, everybody will now understand it, which is positive feedback in law breaking and law enforcement. The police officer who looks out at a sea of people sleeping on the street, all of whom are breaking the law by sleeping on the street, and says, you know, arresting one of these people is just not going to do any good, um, is doing the right analysis, but only at one level. All the people sleeping on the street are perfectly aware that the police officer will look out at the sea of them and decide that none of them is worth arresting. And now sleeping on the street is effectively lawful in that area. And it's a tipping problem, right? If you can get the level of enforcement high enough so that the probability of arrest for some violation gets to be big enough to discourage people, well, then they stop doing it and then you can stop arresting them. So if you can push yourself over that hump, you can get from a very disorderly place to a more orderly place with only a temporary spike in arrests. If you have to keep making the arrests for the rest of eternity, it just couldn't be done. Um, but the question is, can you concentrate and, and eventually get, the, get yourself down on the other side of the hump? And the answer is, as Jim pointed out, and as George has done in various places, um, is yes. Um, and that sort of dynamic concentration is something that we ought to pay more attention to in all of our law enforcement activities. Um, but deconcentration is a fine thing. I don't think we should be happy with the fact that we have no idea where those folks went. Um, some of them went to state prison. It's a pretty expensive homeless shelter, <laughs> the last time I checked. Um, lots of them presumably went to other parts of the city, uh, whether they're doing more harm or less harm where they are than where they were. I don't think we know yet. Um, and so it's easy to take a picture of a street that's been cleaned up and say, oh, this is wonderful. Uh, but you're not taking a picture of the street that's been messed up by the same, the same people. Still, it seems to be quite likely, A, that concentration is a bad thing, this version is better, and B, that if we're going to have concentration, it probably shouldn't be in the middle of downtown that we're trying to revitalize. I think we'd all, all be better off if we were frank about that rather than if we were euphemistic about it. The question, one question to raise is, well, what's the opportunity cost? I mean, it's not as if we've got, I mean, thanks to Chief Pratt and the department, um, we've had a miraculous recovery from, from crime in the city, but we're still a pretty high violent crime city. Um, what, how many other lives could have been saved with those 50 officers for what, a year and a half? Something like that? And that's, that's a pretty big investment. Um, if you put it in South LA, um, how many blocks could you reclaim from the Crips and the Bloods? I don't know the answer to that question, but it seems to be one worth, or worth asking. It's a pretty massive investment of police resources. And strikingly, it was an investment almost only of police resources. Um, it seems to me that the, the right critique of the Safer Cities program, if you want to criticize it, is that it's a hammer and nail problem. All you've got is a hammer. Everything looks like a nail. The police department, as usual, is the only agency that has to be there. Uh, and so they were said, told, go fix this problem, and they fixed the problem the way they knew how to fix the problem. But where the hell is everybody else? Both Jim and, and Heather McDonald 
suggested that lots of the folks on Skid Row prefer to sleep outdoors. You know, I sort of doubt it. Um, it's sort of like the, the U.S. auto industry, you know, insisting that, you know, our cars are fine, there's something wrong with the customers. Uh, my guess is that lots of people prefer to sleep outdoors to being prayed over, uh, prefer to sleep outdoors to being bossed around. Um, but the question is, where's the low threshold shelter? Where's, this, where's the shelter you can go to at 11 o'clock at night, stone, and sleep indoors? Uh, I don't know how many of the people on Skid Row would go into that shelter, uh, but it seems to me it's a question worth asking. San Diego built a new SRO. And it turned out that lots of those people actually had $5 for a bed uh, if they could get it by the night rather than by the month. Um, so it seems to me that's, that, that's something that's, that's being under investment. The other thing is, according to the report I read about Skid Row, a lot of the drug problem is heroin. Well, heroin's the one drug problem we actually can treat our way out of. But it's not as if we have any very useful for treatment for people who use crack or methamphetamine. There's no such thing as an empty slot in a methadone program. If you've got methadone available, people will take it, and when they take methadone, they take less heroin and they get fewer crimes. Um, and if you can't cite the methadone clinic, so bring them in. But it seems to me that's a pretty straightforward thing to do, that as far as I can tell is not being done. Um, the LA City Jail is still dumping people on Skid Row when they get released. That seems like not very clever. Um, we still have a jail overcrowding problem, which means streets of services was a joke, right? It was, it was, it was the notion was, you know, either you're going to go to jail or you're going to take these services, except there wasn't any place to put you in jail, so you got released after 24 hours. Not surprising, lots of people turned down that deal. We've got no threat left. If we want to fix the crime problem, we better get moving on to jail. As far as I can tell, nobody's even talking about expanding jail capacity in a place where you do 10% of your nominal jail sentence. And, again, this is something that could be done in jail since a lot of these folks cycle through. We didn't talk much about the infectious disease problem, but you need to look at those pictures and, you know, if you've got any, any public health background, you're saying to yourself, oh my God, hepatitis B, hepatitis C, tuberculosis. As far as I can tell, the only County jail doesn't even bother to test people, either on the way in or the way out. Um, so it does seem to me there's lots of stuff that could be done on top of safer cities um, that would both help maintain the, the cleanup of the area and provide some services for the folks there. Um, but I don't think we should just congratulate ourselves because we made it impossible to live on the street in Skid Row until we figure out where people are to live instead. Um, so I hope uh, that's uh, the, the full quota of, of criticism I was hired to provide, um, and thanks to all of you. Thank you.